So for today, we're still continuing on with nuclear decay reactions. Today, though, we're going to be looking at two of the more rare forms. Um, one of them we've actually been able to make use of. Um, the other one just kind of occurs out of nature. Um, but the two we're looking at today are positron emission uh, and then electron capture. So when we're talking about alpha, beta, and gamma decay, we were talking about unstable nuclei that would emit particles or energy out of their nucleus to become stable. And those are all things that we've studied before. That makes sense. Things like two protons and two neutrons, which essentially looks like a helium nucleus. That's an alpha particle. It just gets shot out. Or where we get a little bit weirder is where we have a neutron that becomes a proton and it, when it does so it kind of emits this electron out uh, of the nucleus. This, this electron just shoots out. And with gamma decay we just have energy getting shot out. With positron emission, so since positrons are just electrons with a positive charge, I mean they are pretty rare, um, we still use that, that same beta signal symbol but in this case, to, to signify that it's a positron, we give it that positive sign there. Um, so then we're still considering them to be fairly massless, um, but then the what it's going to do is since we are taking a proton, having it become a neutron, um, we're gonna find how that kind of looks at the atomic number. And then with electron capture, Essentially, what's happened with that is you have an unstable nucleus, and electron manages to make its way like through the electron cloud into the nucleus, where a proton grabs it and becomes a neutron. And so, and when it, what it, it does emit something. It's called a neutrino. We just use that V symbol for that, and really, it's just still massless. There's still no change in mass, but we are going to see a change in atomic number. Um, Shortcuts there, but let's actually look at how some of this looks. So let's go edit, no, edit, clear. So let's go back to, we're gonna look at a, I know I typically would use carbon 14 for my examples for this, but that's not gonna work in this case. Let's look at oxygen 15. So oxygen with a mass of 15. Go to the periodic table and we should find out that oxygen has an atomic number of eight. So we're gonna start off with positron emission. So let's say, so I'm still arrow, the positron symbol is just that beta, that Greek letter beta with positive sign. We're still gonna have two blanks. In the first blank, we have the zero positive one positron or E plus. And we're still doing the same things we did before. We're still just subtracting across. So 15 here minus 0 is 15. 8 minus positive 1 should get us down to 7. Periodic table, number 7 is nitrogen. Which is kind of the opposite of what happened when we did with carbon 14. Mass was 14, atomic number 6. When it underwent beta decay, or I guess we could more accurately put that negative sign there, our two reactions were 0, negative 1 electron. But, so what we're finding is the positron emission and beta decay, or electron emission, they're kind of opposites of each other, where the masses aren't changing, but the changes in atomic number are different. With positron emission, our atomic number is decreasing by one. With electron emission, or beta decay, our atomic number is increasing by one. So the difference between them is positron emission, a proton becomes a neutron. With beta, or electron emission, a neutron it's becoming a proton, so our, the total number of protons and neutrons isn't changing, but the number of protons is. So that's why we're seeing some differences there. 
All right. In the last one, um, so the electron capture, there's a few different ways um, to kind of depict that. Here's a way I'm going to go with. So let's go back to our 15 oxygen. 15 oxygen. So as an atomic number of eight, for electron capture, I'm just going to write a plus E negative there on the arrow just to signify that oxygen is adding an electron to it. Still have two blanks. The first blank, you're going to need to figure out what that electron capture, what that you know, kind of particle looks like. And so as we saw before, what's on the board, what you should definitely write down is that we have this thing, the zero positive one, and that's just an electron neutrino. I'll talk about that shortly. And so once we have that blank filled in, it's still just that basic subtracting across, 15 minus zero. 15, 8 minus a positive 1 is 7. And that looks really familiar. I'm looking at these two here. They're starting with the same element. They're starting with the same isotope. That oxygen, that 15 oxygen. Different types of radioactive decay, or nuclear decay, with the top one, we are emitting a positron. With the bottom one, we are absorbing an electron. But we end up with the same end. Um, so that's kind of the, the big thing here is positron emission or electron capture. They're different ways, different types of decay that get the same answer. Like, they both produce the same thing. Um, which is kind of interesting. Um, positrons are used for PET scans, uh, and like I said, electron capture is really just kind of used, you know, we find it in nature, stuff like that. All right, so that's kind of the, the last two forms of nuclear decay we're going to look at. Um, we're going to talk about things like fission and fusion later on. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Einstein, uh, but really that should kind of cover it. So with that, um, practice problems, um, covering the five types that we've covered so far. Other than that, good luck.